In 2013, in the deepest part of the ocean, an interdimensional portal called the Breach opens up and massive alien monsters called Kaijus begin coming out from the doorway and attacking coastal cities. Humanity tried everything to destroy the monsters, but our conventional weapons are ineffective against creatures this size. In response, for the survival of the human race, the countries put aside their differences and began building gigantic machines called Jaegers to combat the Kaijus. The Jaegers put too much stress on a single pilot, so a two-pilot system was implemented. Humanity begins winning against the giant monsters, and the Jaeger pilots become heroes. In 2020, brothers Yancy and Raleigh Beckett are being deployed against the category 3 Kaiju, co-named Knifehead. They walk inside the head of the Jaeger and begin putting on their specialized combat suits. The hatches unlock, and they're dropped on top of a massive mechanical body in assembly. The Jaeger is called Gypsy Danger, and the massive machine towers over everything around it while being brought forth to the docking bay. The brothers are able to pilot the Jaeger because of their unique bond, which allows them to be drift compatible. This means a neural link can connect the two through memories and allow them to control the Jaeger together. Marshall Stacker tells the brothers to stay put and guard the base, but they decide to disobey his orders and save the 10 people still outside in the storm. The massive kaiju erupts out of the ocean and towers over the fishing boat full of people. Just when the monster is about to attack, Gypsy rises from beneath the waves as well and carries the boat away from danger just in time. The brothers throw furious punches at the kaiju and knock it down with a powerful slam to the head. The monster rushes towards the Jaeger, but Gypsy grabs onto its head and prepares to use the plasma cannon on the other hand. They fire at the monster, and the explosion sends the kaiju flying backwards into the ocean. However, the marshal tells the brothers that they're still picking up the monster's signal, and the kaiju jumps out of the water, taking out one of Gypsy's arms. The monster grabs onto the Jaeger's head and rips off half of it, killing Yancy in the process. Raleigh is forced to pilot alone and struggles to fire the plasma cannon, while Knifehead continues dismantling the robot. Raleigh manages to shoot a large blast at the kaiju, and both their signals disappear as a result. Luckily, the Raleigh survived and pilots the Jaeger to shore all by himself. He crash lands on the beach north of the headquarters and gets rescued by a man with his grandson. Five years later, the United Nations is abandoning the Jaeger program as the kaijus are destroying the machines faster than humanity can rebuild them. The world leaders decide to invest in building walls around the major cities as a better option against the monsters. Despite the setbacks from the higher-ups, Marshall Stacker refuses to give up on the program that he's supposed to lead. At the same time, Raleigh has given up piloting the Jaegers and survives by working as a builder for the Coastal Wall program. Their efforts are questioned by the workers when they see another wall being destroyed by a kaiju within hours. Luckily, the city was saved by Eureka Striker, one of the newest Jaegers built in Australia, which destroyed the kaiju with missile attacks. The people begged the pilots to stay, but they're moving to Hong Kong just like the rest of the Jaegers. A helicopter touches down as Raleigh heads to the outside of the building. He's surprised to see that the marshal has come for him personally and wants him to come back as a pilot again. Raleigh refuses to return as his memories of his brother still haunt him every moment. But the marshal manages to convince him by asking where he would rather die, building a wall or inside the Jaeger. They arrive in Hong Kong and Raleigh meets Mako, the marshal's adopted daughter who doesn't like Raleigh. Stacker shows Raleigh the other Jaegers. Crimson Typhoon from China was piloted by the triplets known for their thundercloud formations, and Cherno Alpha, one of the most brutal machines from Russia. They also meet the pilots for Eureka Stryker, Chuck, and his father, Hansen, with an amazing record of 11 kills. The marshal explains that their plan is to install a nuclear weapon on Eureka and carry it to the breach, guarded by the other Jaegers. They will detonate the bomb inside the portal to close it permanently. The team meets the scientists responsible for their mission, Hermann, a physicist, and Newton, a kaiju biologist. Hermann explains that the kaijus will appear faster and faster, and they will increase their numbers in the future until humanity is destroyed. He thinks that the increased traffic in the breach will allow it to remain open long enough for a nuclear weapon to be dropped in, and when that explodes, the portal will close permanently. Newton disagrees and thinks that they don't have enough information about the monsters yet. He thinks that the kaijus are clones as their DNAs are exactly the same. 
The biologist thinks that they should try to use the mind drift technology of the Jaegers to connect with a kaiju ring in order to understand the enemy more. Stacker chooses Hermann's plan over Newton's, as he needs immediate solutions rather than something that sounds like science fiction. Mako takes Raleigh to his room, and Raleigh inquires about her opinion on his performance. Mako is critical of Raleigh's decision-making abilities, as she thinks that Raleigh takes too many risks. He agrees with her while thinking about his brother, but assures her that he tries his best to atone for his mistakes. Marco goes to her room, but feels guilty about her bluntness. The next day, Raleigh begins the selection process for the co-pilot, but he defeats every single one of the candidates with ease. He sees Marco's body language showing her criticalness towards his performance, and dares the marshal to allow his brightest student inside the ring. Stacker hesitates, but he allows Mako to fight after being pushed repeatedly by Raleigh. The two begin fighting each other and their movements become synchronized as they're evenly matched. The marshal stops their combat after multiple rounds and Raleigh becomes convinced that Mako is the perfect co-pilot for him. Nonetheless, Stacker refuses to allow her to be in real combat and everyone walks away in disappointment. At the same time, Newton sets up his lab equipment against the orders from the marshal and begins connecting his mind with the kaiju's frontal lobe. He quickly sees a vision of the kaiju's headquarters and realizes that they're grown by aliens just like he suspected. He nearly kills himself through the process, but Herman manages to save him just in time. After much consideration, the marshal decides to visit Mako and keep the promise he made to her by allowing her to pilot the Jaeger. Raleigh is surprised to see Mako enter the machine and is happy that he's finally getting a worthy co-pilot. The two begin the drifting process and their memories become interconnected. Stacker gets the news from Herman that Newton has successfully drifted with the kaiju brain and rushes over to see the results. The biologist tells him that the kaijus are weapons used by a race of aliens that conquer planets and use up their resources. Stacker wants Newton to do it again, but he requires another brain from the monsters. The marshal gives them the contact for Hannibal Chow, a black market organ dealer for the kaijus. On the other side, Things begin to go wrong as Raleigh starts seeing his dead brother in the drift. The spiking energy destabilizes the Jaeger, and Mako also begins seeing her memories. Her parents were killed by one of the kaijus when she was little, and she became terrified of the monsters. Raleigh tries to snap her out of the memories, but her emotional connections are too strong, and she begins defending her illusions by triggering the Jaeger's plasma cannon. The crew manages to disengage the weapon systems, and save the facility from complete destruction. Raleigh rushes towards Mako as she regains her consciousness from the nightmares. At the same time, Newton manages to find Hannibal in the black market. The man becomes furious when he learns that the doctor drifted with the kaiju's brain. The connection is a two-way street, which means that the aliens now know more about the humans as well, and they'll likely come looking for Newton. Back in the headquarters, they receive more seismic activities, indicating that there will be a double event occurring with Category 4 kaijus codenamed Otachi and Leatherback. The Marshal tells Cherno Alpha and Crimson Typhoon to engage the monsters while Eureka Striker stays back to defend the harbor. He orders Rally and Mako to stay put for this mission. They head towards the ocean, and the helicopters drop them in front of the coastline, while Eureka's Striker follows closely behind. The Crimson Typhoon begins detecting movements around them, and the Kaiju Otachi jumps out, landing a direct hit using his tail and sending the Jaeger flying into the water. Typhoon recovers quickly and begins using their Thundercloud formation. They manage to land multiple strikes on the creature, but their blades are stopped by Otachi as it overpowers the Jaeger. Typhoon quickly jumps upwards and using its amazing agility, flips the Kaiju in the air and throws it into the ocean. Alpha charges in and continues to pummel the monster by punching its head. Otachi sees an opening and knocks Cherno Alpha into the ocean. It then continues to attack Typhoon with its tail and eventually decapitates the Jaeger's head, killing the pilots inside. Seeing their teammates destroyed, the Russians begin charging at the monster, but Otachi spits out acid from its mouth, which paralyzes the robot. The Australian team rushes towards the battlefield and tries to save their teammates, but Leatherback jumps out from the ocean and begins attacking Cherno Alpha as well. Otashi goes to face the Australians, but gets knocked down right away, and continues to get pummeled by a barrage of punches, followed by a devastating uppercut. 
Journal Alpha gets pushed inside the ocean, and the kaiju destroys its pilots by causing it to explode from inside. Eureka Striker grabs the monster and lifts it in the air. The robot throws the kaiju into the water and prepares to finish it by launching its missiles. Leatherback senses the attack and releases a large pulse of EMP that disables the Jaeger and all electronics in the city. With no other choice, Stacker allows Raleigh and Mako on the battlefield, as their Jaeger has a nuclear reactor and is not affected by the attack. At the same time, Newton runs away towards the closest shelter as Utachi comes looking for him, after he drifted with their kind destroying buildings and causing chaos in the city. Henson decides to unhook himself from the machine, but gets thrown to the walls when the kaiju punches the Jaeger, damaging his arm in the process. He decides with his son to protect the city, and by the people sometime, by distracting kaiju with their flare guns, but only manages to annoy the monster, which turns to attack them. They're saved when Gypsy Danger appears from behind and catches the kaiju's attention. Leatherback charges towards the Jaeger, but Gypsy manages to maneuver behind and destroy its weapons. This angers the monster, which prompts it to throw them onto shore. Gypsy manages to land without damage and charges towards Leatherback, hitting it with a devastating strike. They continue to punch the kaiju and use their elbow rocket to send the creature stumbling backward. The monster regains his balance and charges at the Jaeger, but Gypsy manages to hold it back. They prepare the plasma cannon and shoot at the kaiju continuously until its arm falls off and the monster becomes unconscious from the attack. Gypsy throws the body on the floor and begins heading towards the Trail of Destruction, hunting the other monster before Otachi can devour the doctor. It notices a presence approaching from behind and turns around only to see Gypsy Danger walking towards it dragging a cargo ship. Raleigh and Mako use the boat as a sword and begin striking the kaiju with multiple attacks. The monster eventually fights back and throws away the boat. It then shoots acid at the Jaeger, but they manage to evade the attack just in time. Gypsy grabs the monster's tongue, trying to disable its weapons. Mako destroys the monster's tail by releasing coolants on it and breaking it into pieces. They then proceed to rip out the kaiju's tongue with both hands. Surprisingly, the monster grabs onto the Jaeger and shows its wings. The creature then begins flying towards the sky as it strikes the robot into the buildings. Otachi continues to bring Gypsy out of the atmosphere as they begin to lose all functions. Mako takes their last weapon and proceeds to cut the creature in half with a sword. They begin falling towards the earth and manage to slow down their descent by concentrating all their energy into a blast. They crash into the ground, causing a large shockwave, but emerge unharmed. Rally and Mako come back to the headquarters, and everyone cheers for their victory. Meanwhile, Newton discovers that one of the dead Caillou is pregnant, and they can use the newborn creature's brain to enter the drift. Herman decides to help his friend with the drift in their last attempt to learn as much as they can before the team goes on their final mission. They connect with the Kaiju Spring and discover the secrets to the breach by searching the memories. The two immediately realize that their plan won't work and rush to inform the marshal. At the same time, Stacker has decided to replace Hansen due to his injuries and pilot the Jaeger personally. Chuck says goodbye to his father, as he knows that this mission might be his last. The two remaining Jaegers drop into the ocean and begin heading towards the breach. They maneuver underwater and soon begin to realize that the visibility is extremely poor. As they reach closer to the portal, they begin seeing two Kaijus, Scunner, and Raiju, both Category 4s. However, they notice that oddly, the Kaijus are not trying to stop them from making the jump. The two doctors rush into the command room and tell them to stop immediately. They won't be able to go through the breach because it requires the Kaiju's DNA for access. They have to trick the system by going into the portal with one of the monsters. Before the doctors can finish explaining, the radar picks up another signature coming out. This time, a Category 5 Kaiju named Slattern appears. Rally and Mako try to help their teammate, but get attacked by Scunner right away. They manage to throw the monster on the ground, but Raiju strikes from behind and takes out one of their arms. It turns around and charges at the rally, but instead of escaping, they point the sword at the monster and cut the kaiju in half using its own momentum. The Category 5 kaiju attacks Eureka and pushes it away from the breach. They manage to fight back and stab the monster with both of their swords, causing it to scream in agony. Slattern yells to his comrade for help, and the two monsters charge out the Jaeger with blinding speed. Realizing that there's no escape, the Marshal plans to use himself as a bomb to clear the way for Gypsy Danger so that they may use their nuclear reactor to close the breach. He detonates the bomb which causes a huge explosion, sending the water away from underneath the ocean. Gypsy braces for the impact and begins walking towards the breach. Surprisingly, Slattern somehow survived the explosion and plans to prevent Gypsy from reaching the portal.
They jump towards the monster and begin snapping it repeatedly. Rally turns on the central reactor and begins burning a hole through the kaiju, which ultimately kills it. They manage to make it through the bridge while carrying the monster's body. Mako slowly passes out from the lack of oxygen, but Rally puts her in the escape pod and fires it away from the aliens. He dislodges himself and continues towards the nuclear reactor, where he manually sets the explosion to occur in 60 seconds. Rally then ejects himself in the escape pod as the Jaeger continues to fall into the kaiju's military base. The aliens look at the machine in confusion as the nuclear reactor approaches meltdown and explodes, destroying everything in the vicinity and closing the bridge at the same time. Both Mako and Rally survive the explosion and the people are celebrating their victory. The two embrace each other as the military arrives to their rescue. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for part two of the Pacific Rim movies. Goodbye.